In a recent briefing to Elon Musk, who was literally gaming during the call, a SpaceX team member detailed the challenges encountered on Starship's fifth flight. The discussion highlighted several close calls that put the spacecraft's safety systems to the test. A critical issue involved a misconfigured setting that almost triggered an abort seconds before booster catch, which would have sent the rocket crashing into the ground. Additionally, a chine cover came loose mid-flight at the transonic stage, exposing essential components required for a smooth landing burn. The team emphasized their balancing act between accelerating the flight schedule and performing in-depth checks, which, though thorough, were limited by time constraints. Moving forward, they're focused on enhancing safety protocols and addressing in-flight vulnerabilities, prioritizing risk reduction over speed for upcoming missions. Here's an excerpt from the conversation. Not immediately, I want to be really upfront about the scary shit that happened and, and what we're doing about it, because sure. I think that's our focus getting to flight six, like as Mark talked about, really trying to focus on booster risk reduction versus ship envelope expansion. So kind of in chronological order on the, on the landing burn, we were, we had a misconfigured spin gas support that didn't have quite the right ramp up time for bringing up spin pressure. And we were one second away from that tripping and telling the rocket to abort and try to crash into the ground next to the tower wow. instead of the tower. Yes. So how does the rocket uh, help tell the ex like erroneously tell a healthy rocket to not try to catch? And wow. we knew we had a whole bunch of like new aborts and commit criteria that we like tried to double check really well, but like I mean I, I think our concern was well placed and one of these came very close to biting us. This was like one of the reasons we were thinking about the lane below. Actually, if we delay one day, we would like go check things some more. I'd uh, say we would have found. I don't know if we would have found this one, but just to. We were scared about it before launch, I think. As yeah. a take well, we were scared about the fact that we had 100 boards that were like not super trivial and like ultra well grounded and like we didn't do as good of a review as we did for pre flight one and lift off. When we were like in a similar risk posture, when we spent like a buckload of time as a leadership team going through every last detail, really arguing it multiple times. It was really nice to have the flight data now. Like we had a review yesterday, everybody going through the 100 boards versus flight data and what we need to change on them, but just to ground your mental model and where we were. Um, and, and, right. and, and like just to, like, this is like also the reason. This is like what is driving fundamentally the, the the flight six schedule. We're like not going, we're not taking as much time as we might ideally want to have like a very luxurious, like really study everything. But given this is the first launch in a long time that we've not, well, really ever that we've not been FAA driven, that so we we are trying to go do a reasonable balance of speed and risk mitigation on on the booster specifically. Okay. We had right, right at Transonic, which is like just before engine startup, one of the chine covers ripped off, which is something we were we were worried about these spot weld margins on chine skin before flight. We wouldn't have predicted the exact right place, but this cover that ripped off was right on top of a bunch of the like single point failure valves that like must work during the landing burn. So thankfully, none of those with the harnessing got damaged, but we ripped this chine cover off over some really critical equipment right as landing burn was starting. We have a plan to address that. There are a bunch of, like, it seems like the plume during landing burn kind of coming back. Moving on to other updates, Super Heavy Booster 13 was transported back to the build site after a successful static fire test for final pre-flight checks. And a few hours later, Starship S-33, the first upgraded V-2 Starship, was moved to Massey's site for cryogenic testing. S-33 is expected to fly on Flight 7 next year, setting the stage for SpaceX to achieve new objectives and demonstrations in the near future. I can't wait to see more Starship test flights building up the momentum to our first mission to the moon within a few years. That is it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.